tactile switch, sometimes called push button switch, is a type of switch that focuses on producing a tactile bump and a relatively quiet audible click when pressed. These small size switches are placed on PCBs and are used to close an electrical circuit when the button is pressed by a person. When the button is pressed, the switches turn on and when the button is released, the switches turn off. The click response of the button lets the user feel the response of the operation from the switch. From vending machines to measuring devices, tactile switches are ideal for enabling users to have the functions they need. Additional applications for tactile switches are control panels on printers and copiers, TV remote controls, and computer keyboards. Until now, we have only used the Arduino to control other things. It is time for us to start sensing the real world. After we do this, then our Arduino will be able to make decisions of what to do based on input from the outside world. What's missing to complete this picture is a sensor. In this case, we are going to use the simplest form of sensor available, a push button switch. Pushing a button causes wires under the button to be connected, allowing current to flow. This is called the closed state. When the button isn't pressed, no current can flow because the wires aren't touching. This is called the open state. In this video, we're going to make projects 8 and 9 of the Arduino intro app. We'll just have to modify our breadboard diagram to add a 10K ohm resistor for the push button to make it more stable. A 10,000 ohm or 10K ohm resistor is colored brown, black, orange. We connect three wires to the board. The first two will be connected to the power rails on the side of the breadboard to provide access to the 5 volt supply and ground. The third wire goes from digital pin 2 to one leg of the push button. That same leg of the button connects through a pull-down resistor, which is in this case the 10K ohm resistor. This will be connected to the ground. The other leg of the button connects to the 5 volt supply. When the push button is open, meaning not pressed, there is no connection between the two legs of the push button. So the pin is connected to the ground through the pull-down resistor and then we read a low. When the button is closed or pressed, it makes a connection between its two legs, connecting the pin to 5 volts so that we read a high. If you disconnect the digital input-output pin from everything, the LED may blink erratically. This is because the input is floating, that is, it will randomly return either high or low. That's why you need a pull-up or pull-down resistor in the circuit. To monitor the state of the switch, there's a new Arduino instruction that you're going to learn. This is the digital read function. Digital read checks to see whether there is any voltage applied to the pin that you specify between the parentheses and returns a value of high or low, depending on its findings. The other instructions that you've used so far, such as the digital write, haven't returned any information. They just executed what we asked them to do. With digital read, you can ask a question from the Arduino and receive an answer that can be stored in memory somewhere in the Arduino and it is used to make decisions immediately or later. Let's examine the code for project 8. This project simply tells us the current state of the push button, whether it is pressed or not pressed. The first part of the code is the declaration of variables. Digital pin 2 is assigned to pin button 1 variable. We also declared another variable called val. This variable is where we will save the current state of the push button which we will then display on the screen. In the setup function you'll notice that we have set up digital pin 2 as an input pin. 
this is because we are going to use the push button which is attached to pin 2 as an input device. Since we already added a pull-up resistor in our circuit, there is really no need to enable the internal pull resistor of our Arduino board. Lastly, if we want to display characters on the screen, then we will initialize the serial function using the serial.begin9600 statement. 9600 is called the baud rate. The baud rate is the rate at which information is transferred in a communication channel. Baud rate is commonly used when discussing electronics that use serial communication. In the serial port context, 9600 baud means that the serial port is capable of transferring a maximum of 9600 bits per second. There are other baud rates and it really depends on the device you are using. So far, 9600 works perfectly on my computer. We will use the serial monitor feature of the Arduino IDE to display the current state of the push button on the computer monitor. The first statement in the loop function reads val is equal to digital read pin button 1. This means we are now asking Arduino for the current state of the push button. Is it pressed or is it not pressed? Arduino will give us an answer. 1 for pressed and 0 for not pressed. Well, this is actually depending on how the resistor was used, whether it's a pull-up or a pull-down resistor. Now that we have the answer, what's left for us to do is to display the answer on the screen. To do this, we type in serial that print ln val. When this is executed, the word val is not displayed, but the value of the val variable will be displayed instead, which is either 1 or 0. We then write a delay statement to tell Arduino when the next reading will take place. In this case, the push button is read every 100 milliseconds. In addition, the value of the variable val will be displayed every 100 milliseconds on the screen. To view the push button readings on the screen, you have to upload the code first. Once the code is uploaded successfully, we then go to the tools menu, then click on serial monitor. A new window will open showing the values being read from the push buttons. Now that we know how to read the value of the push button, we'll use this for our next project, which is project 9 in the Arduino intro app. This is also called the switch on switch off project. What we want to do here is to turn on the LED when the push button is pressed and then turn it off when it is released. For the circuit, we'll just need to add an LED to our breadboard, which should be fairly automatic by now. In this circuit, we connect the anode to digital pin 10. On the code, we declare the variables again for the push button and the LED. We also need to declare a variable where the value of the push button will be saved for later use. This is the variable named val. Here is the complete code. In the setup function, we set the pin button 1 variable as input while the pin led variable is set to output. Again, since we already added the 10K ohm resistor, there's no need to type in the digital write pin button 1 comma high statement as seen on the Arduino intro app. Let's go now to the main loop function. I have made a slight modification from the Arduino intro app code to make it more clear. In this code, you will need to know about the if statement. The if statement is possibly the most important instruction in a programming language because it allows a computer, or in this case, the Arduino, to make decisions. 
after the if keyword, you have to write a conditional statement inside parentheses. Think of the conditional statement as a question you want to ask from Arduino. And if the answer or result is true, the first block of code will be executed. Otherwise, the block of code after the else will be executed. Okay, so the first statement here is to read the value of our push button. So we type val is equal to analog read pin button 1. We should get a 1 or 0. In Arduino, a 1 value is the same as high and a 0 value is the same as low. So if you get a 1, that means the push button is pressed. If you get a 0, it means that the push button is released. After getting the value of our push button, we then write the if statement. What we want to do here is if the button is pressed, turn on the LED, else turn off the LED. Converting this statement into an if statement is easy. You just type in if val is equal to high, then digital right, pin led, comma, high. Else digital right, pin led, comma, low. Notice that the double equal symbol is very different from the single equal symbol. The double equal sign is used when two expressions are compared and returns true or false. The single equal sign assigns a value to a constant or a variable. Make sure that you use the correct one because it is very easy to make that mistake and use just a single equal sign instead of a double in which case your program will never work. This project is already good as it is, however, we can still improve this one. Right now, holding your finger on the button for as long as you need light is not really that practical. We need a way to let the button stick to its current state, like pushing the button once, the LED turns on, and pushing it again turns the LED off. For these to happen, we'll need the same breadboard circuit, but we need to tweak our code a little bit. It's really a simple code, but very effective. What we need is another variable to save the value of high or low. Every time we push the button, we change the value of this variable. For example, if the current value of this variable is high, then we'll change it to low. If it is low, then we'll change it to high. Finally, when we type a digital write statement, we can then use this variable to turn the LED on or off. So how is this translated into code? Here's the final code for our sticky push button. First, we add this variable that will hold the high or low value. Let's name it as lead state and give it an initial value of low. Then in the condition where the button is pressed, which is if val is equal to 1, we add the line led state is equal to exclamation point led state. You may want to let that thought sink in for a second. The exclamation mark in Arduino means not. This is really where the magic comes in. We can also interpret it as let the new value of the led state variable be not the current value of the led state variable. Therefore, if the current value of lead state is low, then the new value of the lead state variable is high, which is not low or the opposite of low. Sounds confusing at first, but logically it makes sense. Finally, in the digital write function, we simply say digital write pin lead comma lead state. When the program is run, the variable lead state will be replaced by the actual value of lead state which is a high or a low. A delay of one second is added in preparation for the next reading. Now in this video, we talk about getting input from a push button to turn on and turn off an LED. This is really what makes Arduino so exciting, being able to read what's happening in the physical world and having the ability to react. If this is all new to you, you may want to try this project now. 